Well, um, I first got interested in labyrinths like many of my life-changing experiences. I stumbled across a labyrinth purely by default um, at the Christian Greenbelt Arts Festival some ten years ago or so. I thought, oh, I'm really interested in this, kind of back to the idea of walking and praying. I thought that was quite intriguing. I hadn't really sort of done an awful lot of that before. Um, so I guess that was the beginning. And from then onwards, I had an opportunity and a time to um, explore that a bit further. There was a big labyrinth in St Paul's Cathedral, actually, in London, that a chap and I went to um, walk. They had the big labyrinth spread out there for a week and became quite intrigued by that took the design and redid a similar sort of thing for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and discovered that actually there were lots of people looking, um, I think, for ways to pray and to be still and to be quiet in the kind of busy, frantic world that we live in. Um, so I was very drawn, I think, to that whole notion of walking. It's a bit of a paradox that you can walk a labyrinth and still find a sense of stillness and quiet within you. I um, had a bit of time in my life where I was able to go and train, um, went over to the States, to San Francisco, to train as a labyrinth facilitator, and the rest, as they say, is history. Enabling people to pray. Labyrinths are great helping people to pray. Um, partly because I, I think most of us find it quite difficult to pray. Um, perhaps that's just my life experience, but I, I think lots of folks find that notion of finding the still point within you as quite a difficult thing to do. Um, the Buddhists call it the monkey mind, you know, we try and be still and quiet but actually loads of things impact our heads and we keep thinking, oh I forgot to do this and I haven't done that. Um, the great thing about walking in a labyrinth is that actually it somehow helps you to do that, um, to slow yourself down, to slow your mind down. Um, so walking the labyrinth, there's actually three, three aspects to walking it, so the first point, part of it is walking in from the outside into the centre, so it's just the one path that you follow. And the first part of that is really that um, shedding of thoughts and all the stuff, the baggage that we carry in our head. So you cross over the threshold into the labyrinth, walking from the outside into the centre, and that's really a time to just slow down, um, letting go. We call it the releasing time of the walk. Um, and it's just an opportunity to begin to clear your mind a bit. When you reach the centre, the centre is not the purpose of the walk, it's part of the process and the centre is a place of receiving. So that's a place where um, in the centre quite often you see that as a kind of rosette or a circle shape. It, it's, a, it's an opportunity for folks to sit or to kneel or to stand, whatever they feel comfortable, but, but it's a place of receiving. It's a place of prayer, a place of listening. Um, so you're kind of quieting your mind, coming to that listening place. And then you follow the same path back out again and um, back out again is just a returning back out in the world, feeling a bit more renewed and refreshed for your onward journey. You often find that folks walk a bit quicker going out, a bit more energised um, back out into the world. So yeah, I think it's that process of quietening your mind, um, listening to God and feeling a bit more renewed for, for what your calling is in the world actually, that folks are really finding it helpful tool of prayer. And, and the great thing about labyrinths is you can set them up anywhere, you can you know, put them out in pebbles or paper or, or whatever, lay them out on your front of your churches, inside your church halls. Um, it's an opportunity for folks to just quieten the mind and I think often in our busy, frantic 24-7 world we need more tools actually that help us come to a place of quiet so we can begin to listen, I guess, to what God is calling us to do and to be.